Good morning and welcome to Freiburg, the unofficial bike capital of Germany. We've come out this morning to shoot the last and fifth episode of the factory tour that we've been up to here. We've arrived by train and cycled over to Touterrain, the manufacturer of our bikes that we've been riding for almost a year now. That's the Outback, so this is a, a minted, very clean showroom model. Ours are definitely a bit more dusted up. And Touterrain doesn't only make frames, they also make their own carbon forks, shifters, seat posts, and they work with some of our other partners, Pinion, Gates, and Tubas for the racks. And today we're going to see how things are done here, because the frames arrive from Vietnam and Taiwan, and everything else is done here in-house. So they have the entire building and they put the bikes together before shipping them out to customers or dealers and also paint coat them. And we are particularly proud of the paint coat on our Outbacks because they've held up with everything we've thrown at them. We don't think they need it, but they're gonna get a little checkup uh, here today just in case for next riding season. And we're gonna see everything else that happens here at the Tuteran office. So, this is Tuteran and this is the factory tour. So, Oli, we are here uh, to take a look at Tuteran and see everything that's going on in the building. But first of all, uh, you and Stephanie have created this company quite a while ago. Uh, we've been told 2005. And she also told us uh, that you have a, a mutual touring background. You did quite a bit of traveling before you actually started the company. So I would like to ask you what uh, kind of trips you've done and when you sort of started thinking about creating Touterrain why you created it, how and when? I think it was in 1999 or 1998 when we were in Canada. Um, we did a bike tour there and um, we came back and we did another tour and to, to like other countries. Um, and then we went to um, Tibet and, and Nepal. And at that time we were riding full suspension mountain bikes, which was not, it's, I mean, it wasn't as common as, as it is nowadays. Um, especially not if you have uh, racks on it, cargo on it, and um, we felt it was the right the right product basically um, to ride a off road touring. Um, at that time, most of the roads up there were just unpaved, very tough gravel, and still it didn't feel you know it didn't feel super good because it was everything was wobbly, it wasn't stiff, and we were a little bit afraid of you know. If something breaks, like a rack or the the rear wheel triangle, yeah, because you had a, a lot of flex in the system, and basically that was when we first had the idea. When the idea was basically initially born, I mean, most people didn't know or don't know um, that the first product we saw was actually the trailer. Yeah, but the whole idea was born um, around a full suspension touring bike, and what we are known for are actually the unsuspended touring bikes with the integrated rack. Yeah. So the, the, whole, the whole concept of integrated racks was based on a full suspension bike where we said we need to have to be able to ride such tough gravel roads a suspended bike but it needs to be a lot tougher than a normal mountain bike with full suspension um, because it needs to, or in, and it needs to have an integrated rack. We always saw ourselves as enablers for people who want to live an adventure, and that can be many things. You know, you have different people. Like everybody has a different understanding of adventure. But because we come from touring, it's very natural to talk about traveling and adventures. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to to parents um, who bought a single trailer, for them it's you know it's a daily adventure and just go outside and ride. It's, it's, it's always the adventure story is re, really one of our core values. Yeah. And what about drivetrains, lastly? Um, you might have come across that we were, I think, one of seven companies in the world who started with uh, Gates Belts in 2008. Ah. Um, so, in fact, I think we were the first company in Europe. Wow. 
um, and we, st we were actually the first serial production bike that was sold with pin and gearbox in 2012, if I'm not completely mistaken. So whenever you can, you can have a product that, you know, that eases your bike life and you don't need to, I'm not, you know, you have people who love to, you know, take every, every bolt apart and grease it and maintain it. And, and that's not my thing. So whenever we came some, across something that made life easier, um, we thought, okay, let's have a look at it. And that's why we started with Gates Belts. Initially, yeah. um, we thought, hey, this is great. I mean, we figured out a, uh, some of the issues along the, along the, along the way um, about belt alignment, belt adjustment that we had our unique solutions for. Um, and then the same thing when Pinion came across, but to be fair, Roloff is from a maintenance perspective, actually the same thing. Yeah. It's just Pinion brought it to a different level in terms of bike handling, um, balance of the bike um, compared to a roll-off hub. So Sebastian, we're here uh, at the production gates, mm -hmm. ready to take a little tour. Um, do you want to tell a little bit about yourself, uh, how long you've been working for Two Terrain? Yeah, I work, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm the operation manager from Two Terrain and I do it uh, this uh, a little bit more than two years. Okay. Yeah. And um, my last step was uh, another company in the bike, uh, bicycle uh, uh, industry it's uh, tune yeah. I come from light parts and uh, now I come to the really cool things yeah <laughs> the more heavy sturdy touring yeah. bikes all right Steel. well let's let's take a little tour yeah, so uh, first we we check uh, the footwear uh, you yeah. have no flip-flops no flip -flops. okay so <laughs> the first uh, step here in the production is the steel frame this is a uh, amber road uh, trapez uh, steel frame yeah it's uh, in, in in for here uh, for, uh, in taiwan they coat it uh, with a uh, with a phosphor okay. coating uh, because uh, we we don't want uh, a corrosion yeah. on uh, in the frame or on the frame And uh, here we put uh, the frame inside yeah. and uh, then the machine starts, uh, I mean five minutes, yeah, and uh, then after that uh, the finish is fine for, yeah. the, uh, for the coating. And uh, here is um, the coating machine, we put uh, the, the powder on the on the frame, it's a uh, yeah, it's a el electric uh, process. Mm -hmm. We we it's it's the same as a, a glue. So uh, we put uh, the coating on the frame. We start with the primer, and then we put it in the oven for 20 yeah. minutes or half hour. Yeah. Then uh, they comes out, and uh, the next step is uh, to to coat it with the the color. With the color. And what, uh, what exactly do you do in the last steps before the frame goes to yeah, I, uh, the Here, I show you. Here is, uh, is uh, the coated frame. Yeah. And uh, after the coating process, we have to, to clean uh, the threads or, or to clean uh, the, the headset uh, for the, uh, the cups of the headset. Yeah. Um, also, uh, here uh, we have some uh, nose 
and uh, we have to clean it uh, or to thread it and uh, after that we put inside the frame uh, for the corrosion uh, wax. After that uh, the frame is ready yeah. for your next world tour. And uh, then we come here to the production, to okay. the building zone. And as I understand, every, literally every bike uh, is put together by hand. Yes. By, by an actual mechanic. Exactly, yeah. And uh, for example here, uh, Louis uh, uh, built uh, Amber Road uh, trapeze. We put inside uh, the, uh, the bottle brackets, the headset, the, the, the complete cockpit and uh, looks more and more... Uh, it's like a real bike. Yeah, a real bike, yeah. So in a process like this, the bike is put together fully by hand. I imagine there's a lot of other bike companies that have an automated process, maybe with a, a line where parts get put on one by one. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the benefit of having a bike be assembled by an actual human, someone who knows mechanics and someone who can put the bike together with care? What, what are the advantages of that? We have more time for the complete bike and we have so a lot of, of parts on the bike it's very important to check everything and uh, after that after this uh, final uh, process it's uh, it's for us it's very important uh, that uh, the bike is working 100 percent yeah functioning fully 110 percent <laughs> because uh, it's uh, he will start his uh, ride to to Mongolia yeah, or, or it, Singapore, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, that is what it's all about, right? Uh, All-terrain bikes uh, focused on the touring market, long-term travel, you know, at least long-term heavy use. And I, I guess that's why you prefer to manufacture them by, or to put them together by hand, so that when they go out of the factory to the customer, to the dealer, yeah. you know that you've done everything to make it work as smoothly as possible. Yeah. We have uh, the best experience uh, with this way. So Stephanie, we've gotten a chance at seeing uh, the company today, all of Tutana at least a lot of it. Um, you started this company together with your husband 17 years ago and a lot has changed in the bike industry since then. Uh, one thing in particular that has come up also with us and our bikes is that gravel has become mm -hmm. this big segment and it's really opened up and a lot of people have started making specific bikes for it, mm -hmm. including Tutera. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your gravel bike lineup? Um, sure. Um, for us, this was um, kind of an experience um, because we, we didn't really know where it would go. As you said, um, a lot of companies started developing bikes for it. And so we said, well, that's, um, it perfectly fits our segment. We are not in, let's say, the, um, the endurance gravel um, biking. But it's, um, it's really about the bikepacking, um, gravel bike experience or yeah. adventure. So um, we started with the Outback actually um, in 2016 already, not as a gravel bike, but more like a crossover bike, uh, something in between touring and uh, mountain biking. And a um, couple years later, um, we, like the, the Vasco, um, as well as a scrambler um, uh, um, came came into the um, gravel gravel bike line as well. Yeah, we've been testing the scrambler mm -hmm. and the Vasco very nicely yeah. in Spain. <laughs> the perfect gravel paradise for it. The next project, as you know, that we'll be doing together with you, is uh, quite exciting. In your new on your new Scana bike, mm -hmm. the, the the new electric bike from yes. Tutera, uh, with Belen's brother, he's going to come along. And we'll be in Italy uh, doing a, a nice ride in the Alps. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first times that we do a project like that on an electric bike. And from what I know, it's also quite new for you, this electric bike market, mm -hmm. as it's just emerging. It's also something that is quite important for Tutoran's future, no? Definitely. Um, so in the past, we like our our mix of um, of electric bikes and bio bikes. Um, the electric bikes is the par uh, portion is very little at the moment. 
um, but we definitely see um, demand and customers like tutoring customers are asking for electric bikes. Yeah. So um, we did have the concept of the silent e-drive, which um, consists out of the um, like our frame, the tutor uh, frame with all the um, details. Um, as well as pinion and gates yeah. um, and uh, the neo drives uh, rear motor yeah um, so with the new scanner you just mentioned um, it's for us it was kind of a revolution because it's um, the first um, aluminum um, electric bike we did with an integrated uh, battery so that's really exciting we just launched that um, beginning of this year and um, yeah, it's um, so far it's it's quite successful. And also um, we have we have really um, uh, exciting projects, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, electric bike um, uh, products in in the pipeline um, for the next uh, two years. I can't really go into any details, <laughs> but um, understandably. It's, it's um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a big change for us as well. We are really excited about it. Yeah, we are too. Well, I mean, we've very much enjoyed today's visit to your company, uh, the factory here, and we are really looking forward to seeing what you bring out in the next couple of years, testing the bikes, the mm -hmm. future bikes, uh, starting with the the Scana in Italy, and we'll keep on using the Outback with pleasure on our big trips and expeditions. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for having us today and also thanks for this wonderful partnership that we have. Um, same, same to you, it was great having you here and finally meeting you in, in person, yeah. not only um, <laughs> virtually. Yeah, we are excited for the next adventures and, uh, and trips. Wonderful, well thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> well, there you have it, we are back outside sun is setting, uh, it's getting late, <laughs> we ought to get out of here. Uh, but this was the last episode of the factory tour. Mm -hmm. So we hope you enjoyed. Uh, with every factory we visited, we have had to leave out quite a lot because there was simply not enough time to film all of it. But we hope you got a good first impression of our wonderful partners and uh, the work they do, the products they make. What was your impression, Bri? Did you enjoy this uh, two-week project? Yeah, I think it's so important to know who you're working with and how actually things are made. Yeah, it's something actually we should be taught in school. Just yeah. how our thing, things are made, yeah. Yeah, how the industry yeah. works. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, just a note, we want to say thanks to Interrail. Uh, they've been kind enough to send us a, uh, a ticket for all the trains that we've been able to take here in the country. Big recommendation. My bike, it's always a bit complicated, we'll be honest about that, but you should absolutely check them out and uh, yeah, make sure you find a ticket for your own travels with or without bike through Europe. Mm -hmm. We are going to get out of here, traffic's picking up, rush hour is starting, and uh, find our way back to Freiburg main station for a continuing journey onwards to Italy, mm -hmm. where as you know we uh, have cool kind of teased the project a little bit already, but that is coming up. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more cycling content, uh, less cars and um, more mountains. More, more mountains. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Hey, high five. High five.